Okay, welcome to the T-Row Show. This is your host, Keith. We've got uh, some other people on the line that have gone down um, uh, the, uh, the narrow way. Uh, we're going to be covering a few things that we um, we said we were going to cover, which is, uh, uh, but a side issue. We need to have a side issue. This is um, part four, right? We got three of these, and this is uh, the part four in the series. So... Uh, there's always been some issues people have had that where Jesus went for three days after he, when he died. Where did he go for three days? And so that answer is here. Um, you call it Sheol? So S-H-E-O-U-L? Yep. Okay. And that's the place where the place of torment and paradise, which is the bosom of Abraham. That's where they resided. That is separate from heaven. Okay, so he stayed there for three days, and it's a place where um, I could just read it. it says, before he, uh, therefore, he says, uh, when he ascended on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts to humanity. Now, this, he ascended. Well, what does this mean? Uh, but he also first descended into the lower parts, the earth. He who descended is also the one who ascended far above all the heavens, that he might fill all things. That was in Ephesians 4, 8, 10. So this whole, uh, anybody that, that wants to argue with that, go right ahead. You're not going to get much, uh, anywhere because he did, in fact, go to that place. He descended into the earth. And then when he came back, he, his body came back to life, and then he ascended. And he took all of the inhabitants with him that were with Abraham because all their sins had been paid for and they were now free. It says, when Christ ascended into heaven, he took paradise, meaning and all inhabitants with him. The verse used to support this view is found in Ephesians. So there you go. If you ever had this question, that's that's the answer to the question. There's one more verse, Matthew 12, 40, um, that says it even more clear. For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the whale's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Okay. That makes sense. So um, I, I've always thought that, but I just never, I, I didn't know people disagreed with that. That was really weird to me. I, I just always thought, for some reason, even when I was a child, I thought that, <laughs> that he spent time in hell. Um, or, I guess, paradise, or whatever they want to uh, deal with. Anyway, <clears throat> um, okay, so I have some notes here. The uh, other part of this, and, and I'll, I'll, sh I'll share more of this as we go through, where they start telling you about the history where you came from, what happened. Um, and most of it that we read is is true of where we came from. But uh, before I get on to this, I'm going to say he, he does take you on a separate timeline. Now, I'll, I'll explain that more in future episodes. That's a whole other story. But I'm talking about our Father in Heaven. He does take you. This is everything is done through Jesus, no matter what. Uh, between you and your father in heaven. And I'm going to get into that part in a minute, why that is. But uh, he showed me the garden, the Garden of Eden back in the time where the devil was there and, and uh, Adam and Eve were there and what happened from his point of view. I know the details as to what happened, but from his point of view, I th I don't think he was hurt more uh, in his entire existence because I he he let me feel what he felt. So what happens is is when he's talking to you, he can make you feel things, he can show you things, pictures in your head, and use words at the same time, and this you basically are living it. But. He told him, he says, that was my angel, and he stole my children. 
and his main concern over the years was abuse. Uh, he told me one time, he said, the reason why I gave it, because I was, I was, uh, you know, I wanted to be with him and, and he knows that, uh, nothing, it was nothing against Jesus at all. Uh, uh we had already had a camaraderie with, uh, I mean, I'd already have a camaraderie with Jesus because of the simple uh, fact that I was sitting in hell, uh, after I was condemned and, and convicted. Okay. Uh, I was in hell. There was nobody there. And the only one that came to get me was Jesus. That is our our tie. When you you're empty and you're, I mean, I talked to you like it like I was you know talking to you now. It wasn't like that. I was empty inside. I had nothing. I was uh, probably the lowest I could ever be in my lifetime. I'm sitting in hell. And there's no hope. There's no nothing. But he came and got me. And I'll never forget him for that. I'll never, I will serve him for that, uh, for what he did. And that's the most awesome thing in the world. And he's, uh, you know, he's like my brother. He is my brother. He, he, he had my back. So keep that in mind. And however, you're kind of torn, especially with our father in heaven, because he's an awesome God. And he said, the reason why he says, my main concern was that you were being abused. The children were being abused by the devil. And he knew that they would do that because he knows that the angels hate you. The reason why they hate you is because you're, you look like him. You're made in his image our father's image and they hate the father the fallen angels do so what happens is is that uh, he told me he says the reason why i gave you to my son uh, uh yeshua was because i knew he would not abuse you in any way and i think he told me this so that i would trust more I would trust uh, at the time, this is like two, three years ago. Um, I would trust him more. I had issues with trusting Jesus and I had issues with uh, everything, you know, trusting anything. And I think a lot of other people did too, or do also. Um, but so you're, you're apprehensive to grab on to uh, Jesus at first until you realize what he, who, what and who he is. And then you realize that it's your father in heaven's desire that you are given to Jesus. Okay. Um, and that's why I think they try to come in and say that Jesus is God and all these things are coming in. I think they're just mixing things up a little bit, but uh, 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 he has to take an oath before you're even delivered to him. And that's later on way, way later on down the road. But uh, meanwhile, uh, when he uh, came to hell and asked me if I'm ready to love, I said, yes. Okay. Now, what that means is, is that there's a difference between, and if you go listen to the tapes that we did on YouTube, uh, the Dark Light series, you'll know that uh, there's a love issue, that the type of love that Jesus was talking about when he was here is not the type of love that you understand. So guys, this is where I wanted to get into this. Um, because why are we an enemy? Why are we adverse to our father in heaven? I thought he was on my side. God would never do that to me. All these things that people, you all, you all have heard it. You probably all thought it, right? At one time or another in your lifetime. I have. Yeah. Our Jen has. Uh, how about Brandon? Oh, yeah, man. I went to the Baptist church. They taught me a whole bunch of stuff. <laughs> yeah. They told me a whole bunch of stuff. Okay. And what kind of stuff are we talking about here? Um, baptisms that, you know, when you, you can just 
say the words of I accept Jesus into my heart and there's Jesus, right? Now you're covered, you're good to go, you know salvation. Uh it's it's the typical converting to a Christian, right? That that most churches practice today. Mm hmm And why is that such crap? Because it's not true. Okay. And That's what we're getting into. Why is that not true? We've all lived through it. We all went to it. You remember the operation, right? Yeah, absolutely. That I was talking about? Yep. Um, you said that a long time ago. You even smelled the alcohol. Yep. That was, uh, that was a very memorable moment. Um, there, there was a process before that that I went through and it's it's being shown that creature inside of you. And that's that's the enemy, right? That's the curse of the fall of man that every person has inside of them. So even the church doing doing what they do, um, there's a process that needs to that a person needs to go through to actually see that inside of them. Um and then you have an operation, an actual operation, it's supernatural. Um I remember the table I laid on, it was a steel table. The room was white and it's not like, it's not a white that we can see here. It's, it's almost got like a glow to it. And, uh, I remember getting up off the table. I tried getting up cause I had some disbelief, right? I'm laying on the floor. Um, I was condemned like three days earlier, right. Um, by our father and, I had some disbelief when I was laying on the floor and I started getting up and I, I heard an angel speak to me and he told me to lay back down and it was like really aggressive. And right? he's like, lay back down. And I, I physically got pushed back to the ground and felt a, a hot rod uh, insert into my back, just above my kidneys. And it was like a line was drawn up to my spine and that was that was the surgery. That was the removal of the IM. I went on for about ten minutes. I I felt a feeling radiate in my body uh, twice. I actually asked if I could feel it again, and it happened again. And uh, later on, went through a process of going to hell. And um, then then I started. You know, Jesus came for me. I saw Jesus. Uh, then I heard him speak to me later on. Um, there were there were quite a few moments like that leading up to that. So from there, it's just been strengthening, you know, seeing and hearing. And it's a, it's a different type of seeing and hearing than what we see with our eyes and ears. Right. So you're not going to see this with your eyes, like your eyeballs, that people see this. They uh, You're not going to hear these things with your actual ears. You're going to hear them internally. There's veils all over people, veils that people live in that believe certain things. And I I had to see the veil or the veil had to be lifted for me to see the I am that was within me. It took Jesus to show me. I knew it was him that did it, even though the set apart spirit was there. I knew it was Jesus. I said, can I see this thing where it is? And it was actually internally within your where I, where the holy place was uh, that I showed everybody in the first video, or first or second video, talking about the tabernacle, just to give everybody an explanation as to what you're what you're looking at. So, why are you an uh, an enemy of the Father when you're born? Is because you're born under the devil's domain. Do you have any any idea how much that hurts our Father in heaven? He does not want to see you in any way, shape, or form be abused. Then they say, well, why does he do that? Because there's a thing called choice. What stops him? Choice. He's perfect. He won't violate choice in any way or manner because he's perfect. He wants people with him that want to be with him. Not that those that do horrible things to other people, regardless of what's been given, what's been done to them. You don't have the right. In other words, 
Just because you were molested doesn't mean you have a right to go on and molest other people and children. You don't have the right to make that switch from victim to perpetrator. Regardless of what you're feeling, you need to deal with your issues. That's the narrow way. You deal with what you're doing. That's the narrow way. If you hate truth, you're not going to make it down the narrow way. If you don't make it down the narrow way, you don't end up in heaven. There are millions upon millions of people in hell right now because they ignored Jesus. They ignored everything. And people will come back, well, I'm saved. Yeah, I did this. I did that. And I did exactly what the preacher told me to. Well, guess what? They're having trouble too. Because that's not what the Bible says. They're not, they're not going by the Bible. They're going by what they think and what makes you feel good. Why? Because you show up, you give the man money. And that's just the way it is. So you have to understand that if here's here's the way it works right now. Under the law, if you've stolen once, if you've lied once, if you've stolen once, you're a thief. Forever. That doesn't get forgiven. That's what people don't understand. You're judged and condemned. That blew my mind when I figured when I was told that and I actually saw it and everything else. I was like, wow, man, we're not forgiven. Which means that that's a father that's a little bit sick and tired of all this crap going on. And he he has and sent his son and has you have a remedy and then you ignore it. You ignore the remedy. Oh, well, you know, there's power in crystals. You know, let's go to that one. That's all BS. So that thing is within you. It hasn't been removed, meaning the curse of the uh, of what the devil did to Adam. If it has not been removed, you're under the dominion and domain of the devil. That's it. That's the way this works. And it's as absolute as as um uh as perfection. And you've never known perfection until you meet him. You meet our Father in heaven. Then you begin to understand what he's talking about when it comes to perfection. And it really is, it's perfect. There's nothing, you know, have you guys seen any any imperfections whatsoever in our Father? No. No, absolutely not. You guys have anything to add about that as far as being an enemy? Well, he doesn't accept anything less than perfection, so that's uh that's the standard to go by. So I, I guess you can ask yourself, are you perfect? You know. He set the standard, right? So if you're not perfect, you're condemned. You're guilty. Thieves and liars are not allowed in heaven. If you ever murdered, raped, they're not allowed in heaven. So what they did was they came up with something called the kinsman redeemer. Essentially, it's a uh, it's it's Jesus's family and his people. That's the that's what this is made up of. The new kingdom is made up of his family. Okay, separate from what you guys would know as the public law. So if we were to translate that onto earth, in earth, on earth, that would be the public law of a state. And if you violated the public law of a state, you have to go into hiding or you have to go somewhere. So somebody would try, would create a private club that operates outside outside of state law and you would end up there that's what it means that's the kinsman redeemer 
But first you have to be his family. And so he has to invite you. Or you can ask to be invited. May I join your family? May I become one of your people? Now that requires you to give up everything that you have here on earth. Am I lying about that, guys? <laughs> you don't have to just sit there and be witnesses. But am I lying about that? You have to give up who you are. Oh, 100%. You can't take a single bag with you. <laughs> yeah, I've experienced that too. <laughs> no favorite clothes. <laughs> no favorite anything. You have to let everybody and everything behind. You have to go on the narrow way by yourself. And that also includes your own identity. Everything. Because while you're here, over the narrow way, for a very long time, you're going to be converted into him. Why? Because the Father only invited Yeshua into heaven. And he's the only one that was, um, uh, uh, what was that called, guys? He saved. He got salvation. He's the only one that was given salvation in favor. How many preachers preachers are going to tell you that? Go ahead. He was the only one blameless. Okay, good to go. Only one blameless. He was an innocent man. Okay? You're not invited to heaven. That's the whole thing. Only he is. So in order to go to heaven, you have to get salvation. How do you get salvation? He he does it he supernaturally turns you into him over a period of time. How much does that hurt, guys? <laughs> How much pain involved in that? A lot. <laughs> a lot of tears. <laughs> yeah. You'll, you'll wake up in the middle of the night shooting out of bed from pain that is from within that spiritually you cannot understand at the moment. There's no medicine. That, that, that get, makes it go away. You can take an aspirin, Tylenol, doesn't make it go away. You still feel it because it's Jesus. a spiritual. Go ahead. Jesus is the one you turn to in that moment. <clears throat> because he slowly does this over years. It's a, it's a supernatural change. What it feels like is uh, when you were born and when you were a kid, uh, you could hear your bones growing, right? I mean, that's what it felt like. You could hear everything and feel everything, and it hurts. Well, imagine that times 10. Oh, my gosh. That's exactly. It's like you're being born constantly. Like you're being <laughs> pulled through a really small space. <laughs> A renewing of everything. And in this process, you're being constantly tested, looked at. They're looking under, you know, uh, they're, they're overhauling. They're going into every part of you. And these are the people that help on the narrow way. I don't know if they're angels. I don't know if they're specially made for this. Uh, or created for it, but they, they are there. And they do everything to make sure, and they've got your, they have your back. They know exactly what you're facing. They know you're facing an internal, uh, eternal hell. And um, uh, they're going to make sure, to the best of their ability, that you are going to get where you you're trying to go. There's a couple of things you have to do. First of all, seek the Father with all your heart, mind, and being. If you don't have agape love in you, you can't love him. So there's two commands. Love the Father with all your heart, mind, and being. And then love your neighbor as yourself. Those are the two commands. That's it. I've gone through every one of those laws that I can possibly imagine. And I'm, I'm telling you guys right now, if, when you have agape love in you, I understand what he's talking about. Everything is a love issue. Everything. No matter what you're what you're doing. Man's love is inferior. 
because he has none. There is no such thing as a, a, a selfish prick having any love within him. They call it uh, filio love. We were laughing at this one lady. It says, oh, filio. Oh, yeah. Philadelphia, the the, <laughs> the city of brotherly love. That's, no, <laughs> that's not what we were talking about. It's a filio love that is a delusion within your mind that is is put there by the curse of the devil. To make you believe that you're in fact love loving. And since you're on your own throne there, you start judging the father on how cruel hell could be. How cruel hell is. And all this. But guess what? Everyone that's in hell knows they deserve to be there. Everyone in hell knows that they were judged by a just God. They deserve to be there. They're not, they're not complaining that they're there they're yelling and screaming because of the pain but they know why they're there okay so if you decide that you want to, uh, you would like to have some salvation then listen to one two three this is the fourth one and start your path you i'll just tell you quick i don't know if i've done this before but i'm going to say again uh start at calvary um in other words in your mind think of calvary and lift and pick up your cross which means you're going to take responsibility for everything that you've ever done and you're going to hear some things you are not going to like but you know what the answer is thank you may i have another the narrow way it's a very tough way. You know those people in Mississippi? Somebody that has agape love in the narrow way, those people that just hit got hit basically by a, a um, um, I think it was a Category 4 mile-wide hurricane. I'm sorry, tornado. that just wiped out their city. I look at it as they had the privilege of seeing the power of our Father in Heaven. That's how that works. They're not, um, uh, some of them, you know, will be complaining and blaming God for a long time. But you had the privilege of living through and seeing his power, just the same as the Israelites did in Egypt. That's a privilege to watch. That's a privilege to be there. That's the narrow way, folks. Not blaming him for everything. You have no idea why he did it, and you have no idea, you, you couldn't even fathom that. But more than likely, could have saved a lot of people that you don't even know about. That's the narrow way. Our Father in Heaven is, in fact, perfect. And you need to learn how to live with that perfection. Your mind is changing, will change. Your heart will change. You'll get a new heart and a new mind. And you'll have a new being about you. Jesus will be in your internal heart of hearts. All the time, 24-7. You know what happens when that happens, folks? No privacy. You'll have to get used to that. Right now, the men that they're listening to this are um, separated, cut off. So you have your privacy. You can stay in the darkness and hide what you do. The light hurts you and the light scares you. Because you don't want all that out, everything that you've done. But guess what? Everybody already knows it. At least in heaven they do. And in hell they do too. They do know. You're not hiding anything from anyone. So you might as well get used to it. And take salvation also.
This is not for me. I don't get credit for this. I don't get anything for it. This is for you. I'm paying what happened to me. I'm paying it forward. Not that I owe a debt. Everything is a gift in heaven. There is no debt in heaven. Everything's a gift, and there's no deserve. How many things did you do to deserve what you got, Brandon? Oh, you can't earn that. You know, just like you're saying, it has to be given. So the the same with all the all the things, you know, you're saying everything that a man does, he tries hiding in the dark. Mm -hmm. That's that first process. You start going through that, they show you everything. So they already know. And, you know, it's, it's whether or not you can accept the truth of the things that you've done. And that's the, the imperfections that you have to live with and accept and acknowledge. Yeah, that's what the, the church was teaching me, the Baptist church. It's like you put on this image of righteousness and you assume that you're in the body of Christ just by going to church. But none of them have it, had any testimony of meeting Jesus or being spiritually moved. They just were in the church and doing good deeds. Um, but I, I never that never settled with me because how do you have someone be your brother and your savior and never meet him? It, it never made sense to me. <laughs> family, you know, you know, family, you interact with them. Well, I think what they tell them is, is that uh, oh, I've established a 501c3. Okay, so this is the church. This is Jesus's church. And when you're a member of the church and you go there, that means that you're in the body of Christ and, and speak through or speak with the spirit of Christ, which is a, the biggest farce I've ever l listened to in my entire life. Not because... I know better than them. I've experienced being invited into the body of Christ. And I've been experienced the bestowment of the spirit of Christ. And that is only offered. That is not earned. That is gifted to you. You don't deserve that. So you just, just because you come up with a, a really good name for a church, and then you sit there and talk about the Bible all day, does not mean that you're a member of the body of Christ. Go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, you, you can't assume that position. You can't just look across the street and say, I'm a member of that household. <laughs> that's not how that works. And that's what every church does nearly. Exactly. And it's it's a problem. It's a it huge really problem because it's a huge deception because people are just shocked <laughs> when uh, Jesus looks at him and says, I never knew you. And they have no idea why. Well, the preacher, what, 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 what the preacher. Yeah, we did all this in your name. We did all this for you. No, you didn't. If you never knew him and you were never invited to use the power of the whole of the set apart uh, spirit, how could you have done that? Okay, so you came in and stole use of the set apart spirit, and then said, "Oh, I did all these things in your name." Everything belongs to Jesus, Yeshua, Yahushua. Everything belongs to Him. Everything. Even your underwear, it belongs to him. Your everything that you have. He bought you back. That means he owns your ass. Whether you acknowledge that or not, doesn't matter. Nobody cares because your acknowledgement is not required, but only for you. For it to exist does not mean that you come in and say, oh, well, I believe this now, so therefore it is. 
and then you go and give a speech like Caesar would do. I am great because I have acknowledged this. All that goes away. And this is what a lot of the preachers today are not going forward with. They're going, they're talking about, some of them are talking about the narrow way since we started putting some things out like the Stuart Best series, you know, Stuart Best series and all that, the Dark Light series and started reading it for people. That is starting to get around to other, uh, uh, to preachers. However, they're not entering it. Because when they start talking, when somebody starts talking about it, you know if someone's on the narrow way or not. You can't hide that. You can't fake it. Because you know things that no one else knows. Has never experienced unless they've been on the narrow way. Those are the mysteries of our Father in Heaven that you're told and that you're shown. His mysteries. Jesus um, said that he he divides households. So with what you're talking about, um, you know when another is, is because everyone around him starts rejecting him. He becomes an enemy of man. Um, Jesus came to divide, not to unite everyone. The last days and the end times are about love. It's a war between um, man and our Father in heaven. Now you understand why he condemned you? You're making war with him. You are crying out against him and saying, our love is superior. That's what you're doing. Oh, we accept, uh, we accept, um, you know, all the things that are happening today because we love people. Everybody should just love each other. Oh, you mean he's going to attack those that love? Okay. And that's not, that's not going to fly. Whatever he said, that goes. It's called obedience. It's not up to you to sit and negotiate. There's no negotiations. He will never negotiate. It's not been my experience. I'm not saying what he's going to do or not do. However, his will is done. His desire is always, always done. That's been my experience with him. So there's no use arguing with him. This is a war between your filio and his agape. It's a war over love. Who loves more? It's that crazy. So when you're on the narrow way, you have to pick a side. You're going to be a traitor to man, or you're going to be a traitor to our Father in heaven. This, this is explains what Jen's talking about when she says you're you're going to everybody's going to separate. People are going to come against you and come after you because you picked your Father in heaven's side on this war. You agreed with him, not man. I did. Didn't you make that decision, Jen? Uh, yeah, it was. <laughs> there was a lot of suffering with it. Um, and just for a visual, the um, when you when you talk about picking up your cross and going to Calvary, that that route that Jesus took from the beginning to Calvary is called the Via del Rosso, which means way of suffering, and it's called the way of suffering for a reason. Um, what he endured going through that road was like complete humiliation. He had everyone spitting on him, kicking him. He's lashed. He's, you know, he's already beat up and we go through that spiritually. So it's not, it's not a fun road. Um, you have everyone around you yelling at you and uh, rejecting you and you have to like, keep going. That's what it means to pick up your cross. It's going to look exactly like what Jesus what Jesus did on that route. 
it's not whitewashed. You don't, um, he died for our sins, so I'm good. It's not like that. You have to go that road, that way of suffering. And it is a road full of suffering. When you start seeing, uh, you'll know when you're through the straight gate, because when you go through the straight gate, when you start seeing nails in your in your arms and in your feet, and you're feeling people yelling and screaming at you, and you're getting beat and beat up, and you're starting to feel everybody's hatred against you, and uh, all that, that means you started. The only way you're going to know Jesus is if you go through what he went through. That's yeah, how you, you get have, close to somebody, but go ahead. You have to be willing to die as he did. You have to be willing to give up your life, put, um, put yourself on the cross with him. And that, and that's what you were talking about with receiving the marks in your hand and in your feet. And um, you go through all of that with him. You give up yourself, you give up your body so you can receive a new one. You can't receive a new one if you don't give up your old one. And you can't, you have to go with a new family because the new family has all done the same thing. That's what everybody has in common. They all died for him. They all let themselves go. Very nice people, by the way. Incredibly nice people. <laughs> really understanding too and they got oh yes they are <laughs> patient and they all have your back every one of them will offer things to you that you didn't even think of say look you need this so this is what we're going to do for you say okay well, well wonderful awesome they're really like that incredible people So this should give you a, 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 does anybody have anything else you want to bring up? Cause there's, I know you want to, you, you don't like bringing too much out because you, you catch a bunch of crap from people or they call it the, the, the don't they call the temple. We're going down the narrow way and they're calling the temple. The only temple I think in the country that advocates for the narrow way outside of, of the, the mainstream stuff. And it's called a cult. <laughs> The, the people call it a cult all the time. We if have no you idea why. Cult, you get called a cult. That's that's just what it is. If you what? If you leave the cults, you get labeled as a cult. <laughs> right. Because a cult, folks, is if you're there and you follow a man. That's an that's a, a cult. That's why the Catholic Church is a cult, because they're following a man and the Pope and his interpretation of things rather than following Jesus. And that is the difference. You follow Jesus, everybody says what's right is wrong, what's wrong is right, blah, blah, blah. So if you follow a man here on earth, that's a cult. He doesn't know squat. And that's another criteria for going down the narrow, the narrow way because you really need to understand that you really don't know anything and don't go down there and start quoting scripture. That doesn't work. No one on the narrow way cares because our father's truth is so much more than man's truth. So you have to be careful about that. Now, what we have to understand is that you are an enemy of his, and you're there to reconcile with him. You've been doing some nasty things, folks. Face it. I couldn't believe I was watching this uh, a video on YouTube, and this guy would, would put a wallet on the ground with some money in it to see if anybody would steal it. This there's a one there's a woman there and she's walking by. She picks up the wallet. Looks like somebody's mother, grandmother, slash, you know, type thing. 
a woman you would never believe was a thief. And she's sitting there and says, no, 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 it's okay. That's my wallet. She's telling the guy that put the wallet on the ground to see if anybody would steal it, that it was her wallet. And then just acted like nothing happened. I mean, that was the, the smooth, smoothest thief I've ever seen. And liar. She could just lie like nothing that didn't even raise her blood pressure. <laughs> nothing. Just as steady as Hannibal Lecter killing somebody. It blew my mind. I couldn't believe that she did that. Uh, that was, um, it was, it was something, something, something to witness. Every one of you have done some really crappy things in your entire life. And these are things that are in you because you'll make judgments and you believe in your own heart that God is on your side, that you are correct because why you determined that you were correct. You didn't wait for his determination. You waited for yours. And your determination is you're always right, no matter what. And since you're right, then God is going to be on your side and you're going to sick him on your, this is how you treat him. You're going to sick the father and his power on your enemies that you've determined that you're enemies and that you're right. You see, folks? It leads to death. That's the tree of good and evil. It's in everyone. And that curse needs to be removed from you. Otherwise, you will remain an enemy of our Father in heaven. If you're not truly for Jesus, you're against him. And that's how this works. So first, you have to realize you're, not ad you're adverse to him. And I think the first hundred pages of the uh, Dark Light series really does bring that out. That was the one thing that really upset me. That my vision and my uh, my view of Jesus was completely different. Which means it was a false view. I must have, and somewhere in church, I must have created a Jesus in my head and then fashioned him in the way that I thought he was and didn't know the truth. That means that I was living under a delusion. And that delusion has left me. Been taken away. Jump right in if you guys want to talk. It's all right. We're at that point. <clears throat> yeah, I, I think it was 10 pages in for me that I dropped to my knees bawling and finally repented or started that road of repentance, I should say, um, after years of being in the church. And I think it was about um, six months straight of tears and knee on the knees face to the ground <laughs> um just trying to find jesus to save me <laughs> it was horrible after reading that yeah um uh seeing what i was and how horrible of a person i'd been all of my life i had to take off that uh, that take down that one t row that, that i talked about um if it's still up there, please let me know. Um, where I talked about Jesus had a wife and children. Boy, I got bold. I, <laughs> I got yelled at for that. Uh, Jesus actually yelled at me for 20 minutes straight. Of all the crap I've been doing in my lifetime. And it's not things that I even realized I was doing. I didn't think I was doing anything wrong. That was the weird part. I didn't see that I was doing anything wrong. I didn't, uh, you know, I was living under a, a delusion. Or or you you justify it in your mind that it's not as bad as this or, you know, compared to this, it's okay. Or 
in that situation, what else would I've done? You know, <laughs> you all just, uh, you make it right in your own mind. And that's that, that worshiping of self that happens. I Horrible. didn't know. I'm not perfect. <laughs> Always play the perfect card, right? The not perfect card. That's pulling that card. I'm just, I'm not perfect. I make mistakes. Or th This is common, right? Where something is given to a place for free, so you have the right to it. Right? Like there's a, um, I knew people that would switch tags at Goodwill because they they got the items for free so they're not missing out you know and and they deserve a better deal so in their own mind they're they're justifying stealing <laughs> and it's that that kind of stuff with everything people do how many people take extra ketchup packets and mayonnaise or they're at Arby's and they take Arby sauce or um uh, horseradish Get the biggest handful they can find and take that at home and put it in their refrigerator. Now, I'm talking about that wasn't given to them by an employee. You'll just take a bunch. There, <laughs> there's a lady I saw recently. She talks about propagating plants and she's like, oh, find, find free plants. You go to your local Home Depot and find the, the leaves that have fallen and you just pick them up and take them. I'm like, Oh, you've just justified that in your own mind that it's okay to take from the store because it's fallen on the ground. Yes. He makes a okay. video on it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what what why take just those plants if you're not stealing from somebody else? Uh did you ask a manager? Can may I take these leaves? Because it, it's not garbage. Because if it was garbage, then why don't you take the garbage too? You took a particular thing. That's called stealing. If you don't think you 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 uh, deserve hell, okay, how guys, how many women have you looked at that you have pictured naked in the last three days? Just figure that out. Those guys that are married or have a girlfriend. How many times have you looked at another woman and pictured her naked or undressed her or even pictured certain things in your head that you're having sex with her? There, there you go. You're not perfect. And it gets worse. How many of your enemies have wished you've wished them dead? Instead of loving them, because you have filio love, you don't have agape love, so you can't love them, but you've wished them dead. Or something really bad would happen to them. Or for the ladies, how, how many times have you lied to a man to make it look like you're something you're not? <laughs> you can you can change your whole face with makeup. You look oh, yeah. like a totally different person. Absolutely. Lies, lies, lies. Uh-huh. How many things are you hiding that's not perfect for you or that you don't like about yourself? So that man, when he gets to your house, because you're going to take him home that night, gets a big old surprise. <laughs> How many times have you hated on another woman for looking a certain way that you're not? Jealousy, covetness. You know, you just start throwing all these cuss words in your mind. It's horrible. How many things and how many things, you know. Um, okay, here's another one. This is I was guilty of this. Um you're watching movies that are star that star devil worshippers, people that sold their soul. To the devil to become rich and famous. How many of those shows are you watching? How many times are you watching their their uh, dance videos? You know their music videos. How many times are you doing that? 
because I don't know if you knew this or not, but in that industry, especially in the music industry, every one of those people has sold their soul. There was one I was watching. It was a rapper. I can't remember his name. Don't really care to know. He says, you know, you guys get on me for selling my soul. That's what he says. That's a quote. I'm not saying that. That's what he said. But yet you're watching it. That means you're going with me. Which means he wrote a dot. He wrote an agreement. Every one of them did. They signed an agreement to sell their soul to the devil and recruit for him. Other people. So if you're watching it, you're just as guilty as they are. To correlate that, I watched a video the other day of a woman that said she went to hell and she saw Michael Jackson and she saw um, Whitney Houston. I can't remember the other one. And the angel told her uh, that, and there were others that came to hell because they used to watch them. They fed it. They fed, you, you were doing the devil's bidding by watching that. Because the contract was that they would be famous and that you would give them worship. And that's what you did. So you enter into a contract of selling your soul simply by watching that. And you didn't even know it. Now, how much do those people love you? The Katy Perry's and all that. How many, how many, you know, how, how much does she love you? And all the rest of them that have done the same thing. There, you are paying the contract. Offer acceptance, performance, consideration. They sold their soul. You're walking in paying to be a part of that contract that they signed. Offer acceptance, performance, consideration. Offer is they're putting on a concert. You accept, you go to the concert, and you paid for it. You know that that, that person sold their soul. That means you just became a part of the audience that fulfills the contract that they signed with the devil. So what makes you think you're not going to go right along with it under that same contract? Unless you stop doing it and repent. And this means every Hollywood movie there is. All the way back to the good, you know, the good old 40s or 30s or 20s. All the way back till today. That you're watching them. I think we should stop there. What do y'all think? That'd be a good place to stop. That was a lot of information tonight. That was good. All right. Next time I will go through this though. I will, I will go as you're going down the narrow way. Um, and I, when I'm, I, I did say this last time and the narrow way really and truly is narrow. And I'll show you what experience that was, uh, what an experience that was, or I'll tell you about it and, uh, what the marriage was with Jesus, what that actually means. Okay, what that marriage ceremony involves and what happens. Because that's going to make people feel a little weird. Okay, especially men. It's like, well, I'm marrying another man. That's, that's not what's happening. Okay, that is not what's, what's, uh, what's going on. It's just the way they explain it. Okay, and I'll get into that um, um, in, in detail next time. Because I was there and I went through it. So thanks for listening to uh, part four of the Narrow Ways uh, series, and we'll see you next time.